Hello and welcome to Africa Peseta Productions, at the home of African content where we highlight companies, industries and businesses contributing to the growth of Africa's economy. My name is Tabitha Muthoni and today we'll look at expansion and investment in Kenya's agricultural space with a look at Nigeria's leading commodities exchange Apex Fair Trade Limited, which intends to replicate its Nigerian success by empowering thousands of more smallholder farmers across the continent. And and uh, joining me is Ahimain uh, Oka, who is the Vice President at Corporate Services Apex and also Board Director at Apex Fair Trade here in uh, Kenya. Ahimain, uh, great to have you on the show. Hello, Tabitha. Good morning. How about you? I'm sorry, Sanda. How about you, Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as I go. That's as far as I go. Okay. So, so you just say, <laughs> Mzuri Sanda. Okay. Yes. Now, Himense, talk to us about Apex Fair Trade Limited. It's a leading commodities exchange in Nigeria. What's your niche in the African market space? Sure. So, um, Apex Commodities Exchange is a fair trade company that's focused on providing market access to farmers. Um, and long story short, we just turn commodities into cash. But I think our biggest differential is how we go about doing that. And we do it in a way that's fair, that's inclusive, and that's also, also efficient. Uh, we build systems and empower farmers, empower the entire eco ecosystem. We provide them loans on credit. Um, input loans on credit so that they can use and grow their business, which is their farms, and be able to provide um, more, increase their production capacity uh, at the farmer level. Mm -hmm, great. Now, let's talk about your expansion into the Kenyan space. Now, how timely can you say this is and important is this expansion for you and why Kenya to be precise? Uh, yes, I mean, Kenya, Kenya is a giant. And... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, look, at, at the end of the day, I think it's I think it's extremely timely. So if you if you look at the geopolitics um, that's happening, you know we're coming into hopefully a post-COVID area. Um, a lot of countries are looking to localize their the supply chains, mm -hmm. um, and and long story short, so we've just we've just built a business that enables um, companies to backward integrate their supply chains and be able to have more predictive production cycles that they can they can bank on. And Kenya is. Is, is a massive country, as I mentioned, um, has abundant resources, abundant fertile land, and just seemed like the, um, the right opportunity for us to take advantage and bring our services um, to, to that side of the continent. Um, it's a very, very pro-business environment as well. Um, and, and we're just able to operate in, in that environment and, and solve a real problem. So there's a lot of um, facilities, a lot of great infrastructure, but they were missing the market coordination. And that's, that's one of our strong points. So we're able to seamlessly just integrate into that country and, and be able to thrive. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, some of the things that you have really achieved in the Nigerian space is commodity development that has been great on your end and the electronic trading platform that has increased proficiency in trading, you know, as just among some of your achievements are back there. But how do you think this business model will work with the Kenyan target clientele and who exactly is your target right here in the country? Sure. Um, so we're very cognizant that one one size model does not fit all. Mm -hmm. um, so we've taken the learnings and, and education that we have from Nigeria and we're bringing it to this side of the continent mm -hmm. and saying, how does this fit? What needs to change? And we're going to be very malleable in, in the whole process. Mm -hmm. So we see the loan um, program being very successful. I mean, that's that's almost a given who wouldn't want access to credit to grow the business. Um, that's going to take off well. Uh, but it's very different in the sense that a lot of Kenyan farmers um, use uh, improved seeds and different varieties of seeds. And so our bundled offering is, is really going to also scale here too, because you know we, we provide them different tiers of loans so they can get seeds, they can get um, CPPs, they can also get um, straights and, uh, and other fertilizers. Uh, so I think that bundle offering is, is really going, going um, is really going to take off on, on that side. I also see a more an opportunity for more sophisticated trading. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of Kenyan farmers tend to have larger land sizes, um, and and with that is is a larger production yield, um, which they can then trade right. And so you can now you know before harvest agree on a price with with a buyer and actually trade your commodities that way. So I think that's also going to be um, a great initiative on that end. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm, great. Now, you can take us into the program, uh, the $1 million loan program that is to help Kenyan farmers scale their businesses. And so far, you have helped 70% of the 5,000 Kenyan farmers that have applied for loans. Maybe you can take us through the criterion used to reach to the farmers so that they can take out the loans uh, from you. And uh, also, when was it rolled out and in what regions and how is it uh, so far right now? Sure. So, I mean, the, our input disbursement program is our flagship program. We're very excited about it and, mm -hmm. and we're very happy with the opportunity it presents to actually have an impact. You know, if anyone understands the market right now, fertilizer pr prices more than tripled what they were last year, mm -hmm. and which is very difficult environment for a farmer to operate in. Right. So that means less access less available cash that can be spent on other means. So by participating in our program, it really frees them up and they can have um, money to do a lot of other things, take care of the family, pay school fees. Um, so we're very proud of this program. Yes. and what we've been able to do with it. Um, the criteria is, is very, very loose and very light right now. Um, so it's are the farmer is it, are they a true farmer? Are they part of a cooperative? Um, are they do they have prior loans? And then, and then what's their repayment capacity by participating in this program? Because everybody wants, you know, wants to get our money back at, at the end of the day. Um, so I think um, planting started March, April, um, maybe a little bit into May um, for okay. the season. As you mentioned, we dispersed close to, to 5,000 loans. Um, and so far, it's, it's going fantastic, quite frankly. You know, I was just over there in Kenya and... Um, the fields are, are looking fantastic and we're praying for a, a bumper harvest. They have access to seeds, to, to CPPs if they need it, and also um, the fertilizers, the straights. Uh, okay. So it's up to them what they choose and select to have. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if they only select a bundle that's worth 6,000 Kenyan shillings, um, that's that's all they'll, they'll get. Uh, or they can, you know, depending on the line signs, they can get significant um, values of loans to so up to 100,000 um, Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. I understand this was in was Sengishu County, which is well known for maize because the climate there is really good for maize. But uh, what other seeds are maybe uh, do you have in place or intend to have in place? Yeah, so so the maize maize has been great. So we're in Wasingushu. We have mm -hmm. about eight warehouses and collection centers um, in the, in the region, all the way from. Kaptai to Kassess, um, mm -hmm. Moyes Bridge. Um, we're all very, very active in the space. Uh, and the rollout has been fantastic, right? So we built a relationship with this community, with these communities that we're operating in. We have relationships with, with government officials um, mm -hmm. that all like bless the programs. We also have relationships with the different input providers. And that's what really makes, makes this whole thing work. Okay, great. Now, if a scenario comes up where a farmer defaults uh, in the repayment, what are the penalties? Take us through the technicalities of this loan, uh, he may say. So, I mean, that's that's something that we all hope doesn't doesn't occur. Mm -hmm. um, and we do everything in our power to make sure that doesn't occur, you know, by maintaining a, a close relationship with the farmers and we stay engaged with them um, throughout the season to preempt any issue like that happening. But when when does when that does occur, um, the question then becomes, um, how can we help? Um, what do we need to do to perhaps restructure the loan? They have a, a weather event that, that made that default occur. Um, so we need to really understand the scenario. Um, but, you know, more punitive measures, we're, we're going to have to blacklist the farmer and they're not going to be able to trade um, on our platform anymore. And um, we do it in a cooperative reason. So any ma other member of the cooperative also can't trade. And that just adds a little bit of social pressure to make sure that everybody knows that, you know, their actions are tied into others and they can work together to make this program successful for everybody. And it's going to be a huge loss if they can't trade. So we just hope that doesn't happen. Okay, that's a wish for each and every businessman out there. And uh, maybe when it comes to securities, when you're giving out uh, loans, uh, what was the security put in place for you and the farmer? There's no, there's no, there's no collateral. Um, we mm -hmm. do, we do require a, a small down payment um, from the farmer just to make sure that they have a vested interest in this program and that they also are giving up. They have a skin in the game, quite frankly. Um, but as far as collateral, there's no strong collateral that's made. Um, we use we use our sort of um, screening measures and then we use the social pressure as well to ensure that the, the loans are going to come back. Okay, great. Now, you know, I understand him in stands. We're in tough economic inflation times, you know, going by the numbers as far as statistics.com, you know, the inflation rate globally now stands at 72 
in May. That is from May. Uh, from 5.2 in January, just this year. That is a clear sign of a dwindling economy. And we have elections coming up risks other risks associated with the investor reluctance why expand now when the market is stalling sure no i i agree i mean it's it's a very difficult um investment environment mm -hmm. you know i was reading a book recently that says you know the the time really picks um the man really picks the time the time picks the man and I feel that's way that translates well to our organization. So there was an opportunity for growth. Um, we had the relationships. Uh, we 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 were scaling. We had the ability to actually solve a problem that was on hand, um, mm -hmm. and and so we 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 jumped on it, right? And we're, we're we're taking advantage of that. Now, as far as as far as the risk, you know, we're taking the lessons that we've learned in Nigeria mm -hmm. from being here during previous cycles, including elections and and other sort of risks on the warehouses. And we're saying, how do we factor that into, how do we factor mitigants into our process in this new area? Um, whether that's insurance, whether that's relationship building with the community, and um, what can we do to mitigate that circumstance? And I think this is a testament to the fact that our, our solution works, the fact that we've been able to be successful in our first pilot program. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, understanding those uh, lessons or challenges that you have learned in Nigeria, uh, uh, how do you then you know, uh, implicate, uh, replicate them in the Kenyan market, you know, with an understanding that Kenya is a semi-arid and arid region. Maybe you can take us through some of the strategic measures that you have in place to drive uh, this. Take us through your whole plan of moving on. You've already given the seeds uh, to the farmers. And now what next? Um, one of my, my, my senior friends at AFDB has a saying that says, um, market access is the best fertilizer. And, and we think that, you know, despite the tough sort of environment and conditions, if you can provide market access to farmers, you're really going to enable them to grow. Um, so after, after we disperse the seeds or disperse the other inputs to the smaller farmer, um, we have field agents that actually work with them throughout the season, ensuring they're following best practices, they're applying fertilizer at the right time, um, and that they're going to have a successful harvest. Um, once they have that successful harvest, they can repay back their loans in greens, and now that creates another trading opportunity for, for, for all of us. Um, and, and with that, then it's also going to become scale. So once they've achieved that first level, they can come back with us in the next season and even get bigger loans and sort of grow their business along the way. Let's talk uh, brands uh, closing at this day and age. Why do you think uh, most of them are closing shop after a very huge boom? And how you as Afex, uh, do you intend to counter this if a likely scenario is to occur? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very tough environment, as we've mentioned before. And, and so, you know, we, we have a lot of empathy for, for what's going on in the sector. Mm -hmm. um, my, my CEO always reminds us on the leadership team every time that, you know, his biggest fear is, is, is hubris. Um, so this sense that like we've made it and we're successful and so therefore we can rest on our laws, which, which just isn't true. Um, it's, it's very, we're very intentional about staying on the ground. Um, I'm in Kenya quite a lot. I'm visiting the region. As I mentioned earlier, I know the warehouses. I know where they're located. Okay. Um, we stay in touch with what's happening with the farmers. And this just provides an element of reality. And so we know that we're actually on the ground and solving a real problem that exists in providing mm -hmm. an efficient and inclusive market system. And I think that's key when, when it comes to these scenarios is, is, and how to avoid that is you really have to be in touch with what's happening on the grassroots level. Don't get caught up in the hype. Don't get caught up necessarily on what's being reported on social media or CNN. Um, it's really about being on the ground and being having have, really having your feet in the soil. And uh, what can you say is the long-term plan for you in the, the Kenyan market? So it's, it's expansion and growth, you know, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking to take, you know, now that the solution has worked well in Wasangishu, you know, the farmers are happy, the processors and millers who off take our produce are also quite happy with the service that we provide. So rather than them having to talk to, you know, 5,000 farmers, they can just talk to one aggregator that's actually going to add value um, to their business and they can just focus on processing and milling. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so we have the solution and we're going to, we're going to take it across the country, right? So we're looking at Transonia, looking at Nakuru, um, looking at uh, Kisimu, some of, some of these other counties that, that, 
that also um, provide a, a working solution. Mm -hmm. And also looking at going out into other value chains. So looking at sober, I'm looking at rice, looking at coffee, which is mm -hmm. another one we're very excited about. And I understand you're expanding into Uganda and Tanzania as well. And uh, will you roll out the same uh, business model? And uh, maybe you can talk to us about the long-term plan for Apex in general in the African market space. Sure. So we've, we've always had a continental outview and always had a continental look. So we knew that you know, providing market access to smallholder farmers mm -hmm. wasn't just a problem in, in Nigeria or just a problem in Kenya. Um, it, it was it was across the globe. I mean, across the across the continent. And you needed a country, uh, a company that had that sort of outlook um, from the start. And so we just want to take the solution um, all over. We want to take our ability for market coordination, for mm -hmm. providing um, certification and full traceability. You know, that's a growing trend. A lot of um, other countries in the world are looking at and, and yes. dealing with an organization like Apex is gonna help provide that as well. So yes, we're, we're gonna take it all over West Africa, all over East Africa. All right, great. Uh, maybe we can get to hear a parting shot from you as we conclude uh, this discussion when it comes to Kenya's agribusiness space or rather Africa in general. How does the agribusiness space look like? Honestly, it's promising, right? So we have a lot of smart people in the sector, a lot of hardworking people, um, and I'm very, I'm very hopeful um, about what is going to come in the agri sensor. And mm -hmm. I think if we're serious about making a change, um, we can, we can actually do it. So thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate you. Um, learning a little bit more about Apex Fair Trade on Kenya. Mense Oka, Vice President, Corporate Services at Apex Nigeria, and also Board Director at Apex Fair Trade Limited here in Kenya. That's it from us. Until next time, goodbye.